Hello everyone, um, welcome. Uh, my name is Allie and um, this is my weekly paint along. So this is the, um, the baking pies paint along. Um, if you're new here, um, really glad that you're here. Um, so I'm a painting instructor. I teach online painting courses and I also do these fun live demos every Monday at five Eastern. And we've been working in a little series. Um, we've been kind of taking it seasonal. We did some kind of fall themed paint alongs, some Halloween paint alongs. Um, and now as we're getting ready for Thanksgiving uh, here in the US this week, uh, we are thinking about food. So I thought let's, let's do a pie themed paint along. Um, and funny enough, it popped up in my feed um, this week that it was actually this week a year ago when I did my first paint along um, where I gave you guys the option to grab the download of the outlines and paint with me and we painted pie. So I thought let's celebrate that with um, doing another pie themed demo. So um, I see a bunch of you guys are joining me here um, in the demo. Feel free to say hi in the comments and let us know where in the world you are watching this demo. Uh, let us know if you're painting with me. Um, I love it. And um, yeah, please just jump in the comments and say hi. Hi, Wendy. Um, so just real quick run through of how this works in case you are brand new here. Um, so I teach an eight by 10 um, hour long demo every week. And um, I do have a download, so the, de the demo is free to watch. And I also have a download that you can grab the outlines so you can trace them and put them on your panel so that your panel is prepped just like mine. Um, and you can purchase those for $10. It's like a really great deal, a good way to try out a little class. Um, so you can find that on my website. You can always come back and watch this demo as a replay. If you are just finding me now, don't worry. Um, so yep, that's how it's going to work. Um, uh, I think we should probably get started before we do though I want to remember to tell you guys that you can still get all of the 2021 outlines on my website alleykstudio.com but only through December 15th so make sure you go back and grab any outlines that you want um, from this year because after December 15th they're gonna disappear so yeah, take advantage of those. You don't have to do them right away. You can always watch the videos, but you gotta get the outlines. Okay, let's get started, all right? Here we go. I'm gonna bring in the camera and show you what we are painting today. So this is reference image. Try to show you some of my palette so you guys can see how I'm mixing color and and move it out just a little bit further I think well that might be what we get okay looks pretty good all right oh there we go that's better I think okay here we go we're gonna get started all right so these are the outlines for today um, and what I did is I transferred these using a sheet of transfer paper and then I painted over them using a light purple that I made from Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson, and Titanium White, and I just used my skinny little script liner brush just to cover up those pencil graphite lines so that we don't see those um, as we are going into the painting. All right, I'm gonna pull up the demo here on my other screen so that I can watch your comments as we're going here. Um, so that I can uh, answer any questions you have. So, all right. So, okay, here we go. The first thing we're going to do, like what we do every demo, is we are going to make a purple. We're going to use, oh, forgot to mention, we're using golden fluid acrylics for this demo. If you grab the download, you will get a list of the paint colors that I use um, so that you can get yourself the same colors. Um, I work with a pretty limited palette. I don't buy a lot of paint colors because golden paints are just so amazing that you don't really need a lot of different colors and you can make the entire rainbow. So right now I'm using Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray. I'm putting a bunch of water in there and I'm just making a soupy puddle here. 
and I'm going to use this to just start finding the shadows um, in my composition. So I'm asking myself, which side of the line is lighter and which side is darker? So I have a tendency to usually start just kind of at the top left corner, just because. So that's where I'm gonna start. Um, so I can see that this bowl is all pretty white, right? So I'm going to start putting in some shadow around the bowl, which will make that bowl appear white. Um, and I'm doing this really thin because I'm going to come back with a, another pass of shadow. So this is just kind of like the first, the first pass of it. So we're gonna push those shadows darker later. Um, we've got this wedge here in between the rolling pin and the pie and the little bowl of flour. That's all pretty dark. I'm gonna wash that in. And we're going to pick up on the other side here and just wash in some shadow. Um, I'm using flat tip brushes. These are Royal Langnickel brushes that I get from Dick Blick. Everyone always asks me about them. Um, got a little bit of shadow here on the pin handle and then the shadow picks back up over on the other side. And I'm not worrying about like being perfect around these edges of these outlines. In fact, it's actually better not to be because part of the goal of um, what we're doing here where we're just mapping out these shadows is we're also burying the outlines. So the more um, shadow and color that we put onto our white panel, the more we won't see those white um, or not white, I'm sorry, the more we won't see those outlines. We don't really wanna see those in the end. Those are really just there as a roadmap to show us where the shapes are. But when we look at the final painting, we don't really wanna see those. So we're building up the shadow that makes those outlines kind of disappear. All right, hi Kay, hi Kathy. Welcome ladies. All right, so moving along, got some dark shadow on the rolling pin here. And now on the left side of this handle, there's not a big difference. It's pretty much a highlight on both sides. I'm gonna put a little bit of a dark shadow in there, around there. And we've got a dark shadow on the edge of the little napkin or cloth that this is sitting on. Um, then we'll go into the bowl and we'll put a little bit of shadow in there to kind of show where that flower is. But I'm gonna stay really light because when I squint at this bowl in the reference image, I don't even see all that shadow. All I see is a white circle. So you don't wanna get too carried away with your shadows when you're painting something white. Because you have to remember that if you generalize it and it all looks like a white shape, you shouldn't get too dark in there. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let's move into the pie and we're gonna, we're gonna look for these little dark rectangles in between the, the weave of the pie crust here. I'm gonna drop those in first because um, that's gonna help me to kind of figure out the pattern here and just kind of anchor everything. So I always say do what's easy first. And a lot of times once you get that done, once you get those easy shapes in that are easy to identify, um, a lot of times the other shapes that might feel a little more challenging will start to just kind of come together and make sense. It just gives you a little bit more context than coming in and just having you know one big white panel. That's really intimidating, we don't want that. So putting in this, uh, this roadmap of the shadows, is going to be really helpful. All right. Moving my way along here. And it's interesting the way that the lattice work on the pie is. Some of the strips don't actually weave through. <laughs> some of them do and some don't. If, they weren't, whoever made this pie was not very particular about making their lattice perfect, but that's okay. Because our painting's not gonna be perfect, and it doesn't need to be. All right. 
Um, hi, Judy. Thanks for sharing the demo. And you are always the first one to do that. I always appreciate that. Um, when those of you who are watching, when you hit that share button and just share it on your own page, um, that means a lot to me because that helps so many new artists to discover um, my work, my teaching, and um, just to be able to have the opportunity to try out these, these fun little demos um, that I offer. So thank you guys for, for sharing it and for letting me know that you did share it so that I can thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, now it's pretty dark over on the right side here of the pie. We're just gonna wash all that in pretty dark too. All right, that works. Okay, now I'm going to come back. Um, well, you know what? I'm gonna put a little bit more dark shadow on some of these strips of pie because I just noticed some of those, like some of the areas where the crust is a little burned, it actually is kind of dark. So we're gonna throw some of that in first before we come back with another pass like I was about to say. Just get a little more texture on our pie first. This one is, uh, this is kind of a lot to do for a one hour demo, but I have faith that we can do it. We're just gonna simplify the forms a little bit more, maybe more so than what we have in some other demos, but there's always time, you guys, always. And you guys who are painting uh, possibly to the replay, you have the benefit of just pausing and working at your own pace, which is pretty nice. Okay, um, let's see. On this side of the rolling pin, if I really squint, I feel like the edge of the rolling pin is darker than the background. So I'm gonna wash that in like that. And then I'm gonna put a little shadow in on this side too. All right. Now we're gonna come back and push the darkest shadows a little bit darker. So we are going to um, mix up more of our alizarin crimson and Payne's gray recipe. And now we're going to have less water in it. So still the same two colors, just more paint to water ratio so that we end up with a darker color here. So we're gonna come back and we're going to look for the areas that feel the darkest. So just gonna, push these areas that look pretty dark in the background. We're gonna push those a little bit darker. Got a dark chunk right there. Just looking for these shapes that are easy to identify. We're gonna make it easy on us. Not worrying about the details. You notice how I didn't outline like any of this little flower dust? We're not gonna worry about that right now. We might add that in kind of as some sprinkles at the end, like confetti. Um, but I didn't need to outline that because if I had started outlining that, it would have gotten so busy looking um, and it's just really not necessary. So when I create these outlines, I really try to think about what is the most important to put into my template to transfer onto my image that's gonna help me to find what's what. Um, so outlining those little bits of flower dust, not that important. We can just sprinkle that in later. All right, where else is it pretty dark? Pretty dark right here. Pushing these. I think this maybe is, I don't know what kind of pie. I think it's maybe an apple pie. It looks like an apple pie. First I thought blueberry up there, but I don't think it is. I think, it, cause this looks like a chunk of apple. I think it's an apple pie. Who's making, uh, who's making pie for Thanksgiving this week? Let me know if you're making anything exciting. I am not making pie. I'm hosting Thanksgiving, so I'm making a turkey and some other stuff, but no desserts. We have friends that are bringing all of the pies over, which I'm pretty thankful of. We're having a big Friendsgiving celebration at our house. We're gonna have 16 people. Pretty, pretty excited. We don't have family nearby, so we usually do. We usually do Thanksgiving with friends, but we're lucky to have lots of great friends who bring lots of great food. 
Uh, Wendy says, my mom's famous apple pie. Catherine's making cheesecakes. Ooh, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. I like that. That sounds good. I was um, just thinking today, I have a, a blog post on my website. If you guys look up my blog, I think it's still there where I um, shared one of our family recipes, my grandma's breckel tort, which I believe is a German um, pastry tradition. And um, you guys can find that on there if you want to try something a little different. But that was always a tradition at our house. Grandma always made breckel tort. All right. And my grandma always hosted Thanksgiving. It was her holiday. All right, I'm gonna make these lines a little darker on our rack. And I think, I think we've got a pretty good amount of shadows in there. Maybe I'll push this a little darker. And so this is our roadmap of the shadows. Now, our next step is going to be to wash in a complementary color underpainting. See, Judy is making pumpkin pie and cranberry apple crisp. Mmm, that sounds delicious. I love pumpkin pie, but I'm kind of funny about it. I actually really prefer um, store-bought pumpkin pie <laughs> over homemade for some reason. I don't know. So I'll probably buy one just for myself because nobody else likes it at my house. But it is what it is. <laughs> All right, so let's, um, let's talk about our underpainting wash. So we are going to do a complementary color underpainting wash. Um, so that means opposite color on the color wheel. And um, so if we're going to put down a warm color, like our pie is warm, that means we're gonna wash in a cool color first. If it's going to be a cool color, like this um, container here is kind of cool blues, that means I'm gonna put a warm color down first. So <clears throat> let's start with the pie. Um, I think I'm going to do a wash of phthalo blue green shade for that area, which is a really great intense color from Golden. But I don't know if I'm gonna do that for the whole thing. I might add a little magenta in some of it to make it more purple. But let's wash over, and I'm gonna be real sloppy with this. I'm not gonna worry about staying in my lines. I'm just gonna drop it in. And then, like I said, I think down here I'm gonna make that purple just to change it up a little. But I'm gonna use this blue up here in the background too where I see orange because orange and blue are opposites. So we're gonna wash this in up here as well. So I usually um, do maybe three different colors for my underpainting, sometimes two. I usually don't do more than that. Um, so I kind of generalize a little bit if some colors are similar, not quite the same, I might put the same underpainting wash underneath them. But this, um, this is gonna make the top layers of color really pop. Um, and it's also going to, just to help to build up that base of color so that we can layer on top and really have some fun with what we're doing here. All right, so we've got all that wash in. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna make this a little more purple here, so I'm gonna add a little magenta. My magenta is dried up. Grab myself some more quinacridone magenta from Golden. If you only buy one color of Golden paint, make it quinacridone magenta. It's my favorite. It's, you can do so much with it. Um, all right. So I'm gonna mix a little magenta in there. Uh, Melissa says they don't celebrate in the UK. They don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I suppose not, but um, yeah, it is uh, definitely highly celebrated here in the US. Uh, and you're recovering from surgery. I'm sorry to hear that, but I hope that your recovery goes well. All right, so just a little fun extra purple in there. Um, and you know what? Let's actually use purple for our rolling pin also, because I'm going to call the rolling pin yellow, and the opposite of yellow is purple. So we're just going to 
keep it simple here and use some more of that purple. And we made that purple from uh, quinacridone magenta and a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of phthalo blue green shade. Um, that reminds me, we the color we're mixing is kind of like a permanent violet dark, which is one of my other uh, absolute favorite colors from Golden. And many of you who follow my classes know that we have not been able to get the permanent violet dark in a long time, but somebody told me that it's coming back within the next like month or so. So you guys keep your eye out on the shelves. Let me know if anybody finds permanent violet dark. Otherwise you'll just have to keep mixing it like I did. But that'll be fine too. We're gonna put this up here as well. All right. And now what color do we wanna put for these areas that are going to be kind of a white blue color? We're gonna put down a warm color. And I bet you can probably guess what I'm going to use. Uh, I'm gonna make a burnt orange from Alizarin Crimson and Hansi Yellow Opaque. It's my favorite burnt orange recipe. So I'm gonna mix those two together and keep it pretty thin and watered down because this is going to be very white. And I'm gonna drop this into the areas that are white. You can see I'm kind of overlapping some of the green or some of the blue and it's making green. That's okay. We're gonna be loose and sloppy with this underpainting and that is actually better. So don't worry one bit. We want these colors to play together underneath. And we have almost successfully completed our underpainting wash. All right, so we've got some color everywhere. That's the goal of the underpainting. Now, um, really important little tip here. Um, we're gonna start layering in the, the local color, like the actual colors that we see, um, but we wanna make sure that this is all dry because if you start layering color on top of wet color, what's going to happen is it's gonna to mush together and make muddy colors and we don't want that. So hopefully you've got some areas that are um, starting to dry. Um, and now that we're done with the underpainting, now I'm not going to thin my paints anymore with water. I'm going to thin them with glazing medium. I'm using Liquitex matte medium but you can use any brand. I just use Liquitex because it's a little bit cheaper um, and I don't feel like the medium really matters a whole lot. So um, that's what I'm using. Um, one more thing I'll mention, do you, do you guys notice how when I squirted this, I put it all the way over here? I always make sure that I keep my glazing medium and my white paint really separate because when you're like moving really fast, you might have a tendency to accidentally confuse them. So just a little tip, keep the medium separate from the white because they do different things. Um, and yeah, all right, I think we're ready to start putting some color in here. So let's just, yeah, let's start. Um, let's start by putting in some kind of like tan um, golden tones, we can drop some of those into the pie and the rolling pin and the, um, the lid here. We can do that all at the same time. So that will save us a little time. Um, does anybody have the paint list handy um, from the download? And if you do, could you tell me if I included Burnt Umber Light on there? I never remember. This is Burnt Umber Light. If somebody could put that in the comments, if you could just take a peek and let me know if I included that in the list, that would be fabulous. I don't really have to use Burnt Umber Light, but um, if I did include it, I'm probably going to use it. So somebody let me know. For right now, I'm not gonna use it. Um, so I'm gonna make this golden color using some Hansi Yellow Opaque and some Payne's Gray and some Alizarin Crimson. I did a little too much Payne's Gray, it's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna drop some white in there as well. I'm gonna have to put more of everything else because I put too much Payne's Gray in. Uh, Dawn says yes, okay, sweet. That was a quick answer. You know what? Thank you. I'm gonna just before, since I haven't put it onto my panel yet, I'm gonna stop 
and I'm gonna use the burnt or burnt umber because that's a little bit easier. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do burnt umber. Burnt umber is right here, and we're gonna add some white to it. And we're gonna warm it up a little bit with some pyrrole red and hands yellow opaque. And this, by the way, is also my recipe for skin tones, that four color recipe. It's burnt umber light, hands yellow opaque, pyrrole red light, and white. Okay, now I'm gonna thin it with a little bit of glaze. Okay, and we're ready to go. Okay, I'm using my number three brush right now. If anyone is using the same brushes as me, you can grab your number three. Okay, so we're going to just start to put a little bit of color here on our rolling pin. We're gonna lighten this up, but this is just kind of like the first little bit of starting to identify what the actual color is and not what the underpainting tones are. So it'll definitely brighten up, but we're just getting started here. Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention that's super important is we're not trying to cover up all that underpainting. We are just starting to kind of get a feel of what, what the color is of the object. So leave little bits of that underpainting, which is really fun, poking around. Um, between your brush strokes. We're just kind of looking for these highlights, just kind of getting a general idea of the color that's here. And we don't want to make all of the brush strokes like the same size. We want to kind of leave it irregular, um, keep it random. Just drop in a little bit of that color in. And we're also kind of thinking about um, chipping away at some of those outlines, like I mentioned earlier. So you don't have to be like real perfect and paint right up to the outlines. We're, it's okay to overlap them and kind of let those outlines dissolve as we're working our way through here. So again, this recipe that I'm using um, right now is Burnt Umber Light, Hansa Yellow Opaque, Titanium White, and pyrrole red light. All right, just dropping it in. And it's always better to leave more of that underpainting showing because you can always come back and cover more of it up. But it's really hard to bring it back almost impossible to bring it back. So um, it's better just to, uh, to leave it. And we can just, like I said, cover up more if we need to later. All right, moving along. I like this underpainting, how it kind of shifts from the blue to the purple. I think that's gonna be kind of fun. I know it'll be fun. All right. I'm not being too worried about getting that lattice in perfectly, like I said, because it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so now I'm going to add some more white to this to pull out the brighter highlights. So we're just gonna drop more white into our recipe. Kind of interesting how we have like a painting recipe and then we're talking about baking. It's funny, I'm not a very good baker and I think it's because I, you know, they say baking is like a science and you have to be very precise and get your calculations just right and that is just not how I roll. <laughs> that's not how I paint, that's not how I do life. Um, so I think that's why my paint, my, uh, my baking has never been all that successful. I'm, I'm more of a cook, I suppose. All right, 
just kind of giving a little dimension. I'm gonna add a little more glaze. The glaze kind of just helps the paint to flow and it makes it a little bit transparent. <laughs> Catherine says, me neither, too creative. Well, you know, there are some very creative um, bake bakers out there who do some amazing things, but I just feel like that is a different part of the brain. Um, they can be creative, but then they also know they have to get their measurements right or it's not going to work out. That's, um, I feel like that's similar to people who um, do like ceramics. Um, you're like, you know, throw on a potter's wheel. Like you gotta get that right. You have to have your clay like at the right temperature and consistency and all this stuff. And then there's the kiln and all these like things that need to be calculated. And yeah, that's not for me. It's amazing what people can do who are good at that. Um, I am not good at that. In fact, in my high school ceramics art class, I got a D in ceramics. I got a D in an art class, guys. It's just what happened. I couldn't get, I couldn't throw a six inch cylinder. Couldn't do it. And I needed to be able to do that. Um, oh, thank you, rockin' art Wendy. I do go by the seat of my pants, <laughs> that's right. I like it. I like to be able to just create live and see what happens. All right, so I'm just pulling out these bright little chunks that I see. I see a bright little chunk between there and right here. So there's like these little highlights between the weave that are kind of popping in in between here. So in order to get in there, I'm kind of twisting my brush. You might want to switch down to a smaller brush. I'm still using my number three, but you might want to try using a number one if you've got one that might be making it a little bit easier to, to get in there. All right. So what's interesting about doing like this lattice work is it's not always like the top pieces that are the brightest. Like in some places, it's the one that's underneath that's actually catching the light. And the top ones are kind of dark and burned on the edges. So I'm really, I'm paying attention to the chunk that I'm on. I'm finding it on the panel and I'm looking, is that a highlight or is that dark? All right. Hi, Kathleen. Too much going on today, huh? Well, I'm glad that you still in made it to watch the demo and maybe you can paint later. And I do want to just make sure everybody knows that the demo videos, you'll always be able to watch those. Those are on my YouTube channel and they're on my Facebook page and you can also find links to them on my website. Um, but the actual downloads will disappear December 15th. So you should grab any that you want to try before December 15th. You can find those on my website, alliekstudio.com. All right, I'm kind of putzing a lot on this pie. I feel like I need to move along. Let's keep moving. All right, there's gonna be some more color, like definitely some warmer tones in the pie here, but I like to get a little bit of color everywhere before I go into too much detail. So before I do that, I want to put some color, like some of these whites I wanna put in. Um, so we're not gonna start with like white, we're actually gonna start with some of the cooler shadows. Um, so we're gonna make that cooler shadow. Um, and we will use titanium white and some Payne's Gray for that. And maybe just a tiny speck of alizarin crimson, but it's gonna be mostly Payne's Gray. So it's gonna be like a purple color. And put a little more white in there. And then I'm gonna put some glaze in there to thin it out. And I'm offloading my brush. Do you see, you guys see how I'm scraping my brush on the edge of my palette? That allows me to scrape all the paint off that's been built up in the brush. And then I can come back with just the tip and really control how much is on there. 
So let's put those shadows in first. And we already mapped out our shadows, so it's really easy to find them because we've done this fabulous underpainting. So we're gonna drop those shadows in right there. Doesn't actually go all the way around. Then I'm gonna come over here and drop some of these shadows in. And maybe I'll just drop a little bit of this on the rolling pin since I've got some kind of gray tones here. I could maybe put a little bit on the table here. We'll come back and do a little more later. But since it's already on my brush, I'm like, uh, just drop it in. Don't worry about putting it in the same places as what you see there. Not necessary. All right, um, I'm gonna thin it out just a bit more. I added a little more glaze to it, and I'm going to put in the, um, oh, you know what I did? I made a mistake here. Do you guys see this? This is supposed to be the orange coming through. You see that? It's gonna be orange, so I should've put blue all the way down. It's not gonna matter. This is the edge of the little mat. We'll be able to sort that out when we actually put the tabletop color down. See, that's what happens when you're just flying by the seat of your pants. Make some, make some mistakes, but it's okay. We can always fix it. And the reason I kind of made this color a little on the dark side is then we have some room to push it brighter. So I can layer it up a little bit brighter later, but I'm kind of taking baby steps towards that. Hopefully that makes sense. We don't want to do a real bright right away because otherwise if we do, we'd have nowhere to go. We need to give ourselves room to continue pushing it. Um, Adrian says, happy accidents. Yeah, maybe that'll look awesome having an orange underpainting where it wasn't supposed to. We'll see. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna leave like the bright side of this um, canister because it gets pretty dark. It's actually like a purple here. So I'm gonna leave that for right now. I'm gonna take some more white and mix it into my gray color that I've got. My white's a little contaminated, so I got myself some fresh white. All right, so I'm adding some more white into that gray. And like I said, now we have room to be able to push it towards the lighter tones. So we can come in and drop in some brush strokes. Now, watch what I'm doing here. Do you see how I'm kind of keeping track of the shape of the canister? That's really important when you're creating something that you want to feel like it has volume. Kind of think about the shape of it as you're laying down these brush strokes kind of feel like you're wrapping around the shape if your brush strokes are going like against the grain of what you're trying to illustrate it's going to kind of fight against you and why not just let it work for you also um you know, I'm pretty loose with my brush strokes, but when I'm painting something round, I'm pretty particular because if your arc of this gets wonky, the whole thing's gonna look weird. So as you're doing these round shapes, you know, take a deep breath and just lay it down nice and smooth. Don't overthink it too much, but just be aware of what you're doing and trying to make sure that it doesn't look wobbly. Um, another little tip you can do is you can like brace your hand. Um, you might find that really helpful. Like I have a pretty steady hand because I've been training it for my entire life <laughs> to be able to be steady in putting these brush strokes down. But if, uh, if painting is something that's a little newer for you, you might struggle a little bit with your hand being shaky. And so there's no shame in just literally holding it up so that you can um, be steady when you need to be. All right, 
So we're gonna push that white whiter still, but we want this to be dry and it's still a little wet right now. So that gives us a little bit of time to come in and put in this dark shadow on the right side here. So I mentioned that's kind of like a purple. So um, I'm gonna go back to my little puddle that I've got going here, um, which has the Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson, and White in it. And I'm gonna put a little bit of phthalo blue in there, which is a much stronger color. Um, and I'm also going to drop a little bit of the quinacridone magenta in there. And that's gonna make more of a deep purple. Um, which is gonna be fun to work with. Put a little more blue in there. Um, and I'm gonna put a little bit of glaze in there. All right, so this color is going to go into the shadow here. Here we go. We're gonna layer it on top of that orange. Still leaving some little bits of that orange poking around. And it gets even darker down here, so I think we're gonna have to probably treat that a little different. So now down there, let's add a little more Payne's Gray. Let's just really make this nice and dark. Because something that is a white object, if it's in shadow, it's gonna show up dark. Doesn't matter if it's white, it's still gonna show up dark. We can bring this dark shadow in for the little rib there too. Okay, enough of that. All right, where else do we need to put some color down? We need to put our orange in the background. So we will, um, Make that orange from, drum roll, alizarin crimson, and fancy yellow opaque, and white. All right, alizarin crimson, fancy yellow opaque, and you know what, actually, I hope, if I hope you didn't put white in there already. Let's just mix these two first, and then we'll brighten it up a little bit later. Um, with a little bit of white. So first I'm going to start off with just the alizarin crimson and fancy yellow opaque. I'm going to put a little glaze in there to thin it out so we can see some of that blue poking through. Okay, so we're going to put this in first and I'm going to drop it into some of these shadows. Actually, that shadow needs to stay pretty dark. I'm just going to put a little bit of it in right there. See how it's pretty dark in between? The, uh, the rolling pin and the bowl, but I'm leaving kind of a little halo of that fun blue kind of poking around there. So that's that's gonna make the, um, the orange tones just pop out even more by leaving kind of that little window of the blue poking around. All right, so now I can put this dark color in here where it's supposed to go. We're gonna have to work with that a little bit because we need this to be a little darker, I think. All right. You know, this color I can actually use in my pie to make some of these dark shapes. So let's do that before we go any further. So this is still just the alizarin crimson and hansi yellow opaque. Um, but let's put some of those like warm tones in the pie. And it's kind of, it's got some glaze in there. So it's gonna be a little bit transparent. That's perfect. It's gonna warm up our pie and make it look a little more tasty. It was looking a little too cold. And these more um, orangey tones will look nice against that purple and blue. This is reminding me of, uh, I did a series of pie paintings a whole bunch of years ago when I was doing live painting at an event um, at Royer's Round Top Cafe in Round Top, Texas. 
Um, it's kind of like a famous little destination. I'm curious if anybody watching the demo has ever been to Royer's. Um, it's a pretty neat place and they have the best pies that I think I've ever had. Um, and yeah, I went there and I was doing live painting um, while they were having an event and I did a whole series of pies and everybody bought them. It was pretty, pretty fun. Definitely needed this more orangey, warm tone here. Play off all those cool tones. Oh, it doesn't look like anybody's been to Royer's. You guys are missing out. I'm sure somebody has. All right. Okay, maybe we'll do more of this warm tone a little bit later, but for right now, let's be done. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some white to this mixture. Um, Debbie's been to Royer's, nice. All right, so we're adding white to the Hansi Yellow Opaque and the Lizard and Crimson. And I put too much white in there. I gotta, now I have to add more of the other two. What was I thinking? Way too much white. You know what, if you ever do that where you just add way too much of one color, it's usually better just to move to a new spot on your palette rather than continually fighting against all the mess you made. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just moving over next door. All right. Now I can drop this in for my table color. Let's see, mm, I think I need more yellow. I want this to pop a little bit more. I need a little more of that bright yellow. I like Hansi Yellow Opaque because it's, it's an opaque yellow and that's hard to find. Usually yellow is a very transparent color. So the Hansi Yellow Opaque, um, it allows you to use less of the yellow and it really packs a nice punch. It's the only yellow that I buy. You don't really need any others. Now we can bring this in where it was supposed to go between the warming rack or whatever you call it, cooling rack, not warming rack, <laughs> warming rack. I wanna make, I'm gonna have to clean those bars up to make them straight again because they're kind of wonky. It's sort of the same thing that I was talking about with you need the rounded shapes to be perfectly round. If you have straight shapes, they need to also be straight. So I'll fix that later. Got a bright highlight over here. All right. Maybe we can drop some of this kind of warmer golden color into our pie as well. Yeah, I think it needs a little bit of that too. There's a lot of colors going on in this pie, guys. There is a lot. Our friends that are bringing pie to our house are making pear pie, which sounds really yummy. Like even more exciting than apple pie and usually apple pie is my favorite but it has to be with like vanilla ice cream. Hopefully they're bringing vanilla ice cream. Otherwise I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take that up with them. All 
All right, so again, this color that I'm using right now, this is alizarin crimson, pansy yellow opaque, and titanium white. All right, enough of that. You know, I'm gonna put a little bit of this in my rolling pin maybe, in the shadow. Okay, um, let's go in, like I said, and um, do these black lines. Let's clean those up and push those, make sure that they're straight. Um, so we're gonna make our black because I don't ever buy black. Um, so we're gonna make our black using Payne's Gray and a little bit of Burnt Umber Light. There's a lot of different ways to make black. That's how I'm making it today. I have other black recipes too. Really, if you just mix all the dark colors together, you're pretty much gonna get black. Okay, now I need to be steady with my arm, like I said. Okay, so we wanna make sure that this line is gonna connect or at least look like it connects on the other side. We don't have to like fill in the whole thing perfectly. Like don't use a ruler because that's just gonna look fake. But we just wanna make sure that the line is steady, that it doesn't look wobbly. You can let it be natural, but hopefully that's not too confusing. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. So yeah, I'm not doing it all perfectly in there. I'm just making sure I stay pretty straight. All right, and there is a little shadow. You guys see there's a little shadow underneath. So I might add that in yet, but I might also just indicate it by highlighting next to it instead of actually painting the shadow in, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Um, but I'm going to continue with this dark color in a few other places that I see are really dark. Um, I'm gonna go back and push my darks a little bit darker because they don't feel as dark as they used to anymore. So looking for those places that look pretty much black in the reference image, and we're gonna push those black again. So it's pretty black underneath our canister here and this is also when you when you put this in um, this dark shadow this is an opportunity for you to kind of clean up your edges if it, they got a little bit wonky like if your canister kind of got misshapen you can just kind of come in and trim it with this black so that is one little tip we've got a dark shape on the edge of the lid here that we can push darker Um, let's see, Wendy says, I have all the colors except burnt umber light, but have the thicker golden burnt umber. To use it, would I need to add white and thin it? No, Wendy, if you don't have burnt umber light, what I would do is um, you can make a brown that is similar to burnt umber light by mixing alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, and a little bit of yellow. So you could always kind of supplement that um, if you don't have burnt umber burnt umber light. I wouldn't add any white to it because burnt umber light, it's not, it's not a brown that has white added to it um, because that would turn it kind of um, sandy toned or like gray it out. Whenever you add white to a color, it grays the color out. We don't want to do that necessarily. Okay, so now in the pie, we've got a few really dark sections here, and by pushing these little dark windows darker, what's going to happen is it's gonna make the other areas feel lighter. I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush because I'm still using my number three, and I need to get a little more specific in those little windows. So hopefully I have a number one that's gonna hold its shape. Because we're getting close to the end of the demo here. Still have a few things I want to do, but I feel like we've gotten a lot done in a pretty short amount of time here. All right. 
pushing those darks. This is kind of cleaning up some of the shapes too. That's why I'm getting a little more specific as I'm adding um, these little dark windows. It's helping me to kind of fine tune the shape of the, uh, the lattice here. So you kind of think about your picture as like, like an image that's coming into focus. You know, it starts kind of looser and now we're, we're getting a little bit tighter in, in finding these shapes that are a little more specific. But you don't always want to tighten up everything because then that sometimes has a tendency to kind of ruin the freedom in your painting. So you kind of pick and choose what's the most important to tighten up. Um, you know, I want to make this shadow that's right here, that is the right side of the pie, I want to make that kind of like a purple color. I think that would be a pretty shadow, um, especially since we've got purple going on in our underpainting. So let's make that. Um, we'll use quinacridone magenta, a little bit of phthalo blue green shade, and a little bit of white, and some glaze. But you know, I think I wanna dull it down a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little brown in there just to dull that out. Maybe a little more blue. And that's a pretty dark shadow. So I'm not gonna to be too afraid of making that nice and dark. Um, Debbie says, I have a question. How do you transfer your outlines onto your wooden canvas? I use transfer paper. Um, so you can buy that from an art supply store. I use um, Jack Richardson transfer paper, um, which is, it comes on a roll. Um, and the roll that I buy is actually 24 feet long, so it lasts you forever, and you can get it for like 12 bucks. Um, I'm trying to think if I have it linked anywhere on my website. I'm not sure if I do. Um, if anyone has bought it and you have the link to throw in the comments, that would be fantastic, but I understand if you don't. But yeah, I just trace over the outlines and then it leaves like a graphite line, which um, that's what I go ahead and paint over so that it doesn't show up um, on my painting. But um, yeah, it's really nice to work with. All right, got that shadow in. Where else do we, we kind of have a shadow over here on the right side too. And you know, I mentioned we have a little shadow underneath. I'm gonna put a little more glaze in to thin my purple out just a bit more, and then we'll drop that extra shadow in. On our cooling rack. Okay. Now let's go in and brighten up some of those whites we talked about. I don't wanna go straight white just yet. Um, I'm gonna make it more fun and we're gonna add a little bit of phthalo blue in it. Um, Susie says graphite paper can be found at Michael's too, awesome. One thing I, I should point out, you wanna make sure that the, whatever transfer paper you get, that it's not like a waxy transfer paper, you want it to actually be graphite because then you can erase it and cover it up and it doesn't repel the paint. Some of the colored ones I think might have like a waxy film to them. Um, so this light blue I'm making is um, phthalo blue green shade and white, and I got mine a little contaminated, so it's not as bright as I'd like it to be, but let's try it out. We're gonna drop this in in a good swoop, like that. We're gonna swoop. <laughs> we're looking for the very brightest areas here, and we're gonna go a little bit brighter yet, but I, gonna take us baby steps there. We're looking for the brightest area on our little dish here. And then we've got some bright flower over on the right side. And nice and steady as I paint my sphere so I don't mess it up. All right, and we'll put a little more of this flower dust here on our rolling pin. We want to keep it looking loose like we didn't get too careful when we were dropping this flower in. We don't want it to look too calculated because that just looks fake. 
want it to feel like it just kind of landed there. So you don't want to make all your little bits like the same size or shape because that's going to look fake. And then we kind of have like a highlight right at the edge of the rolling pin that's pretty bright there. Now that I look at it, and there's another little highlight here that we could use the same color for. Yeah. All right, and I'm gonna add a little more glaze to this mixture and just to offload my brush a little bit so I have a little less on there and then we can put some highlights on the little mat that's here or cloth, whatever it is that this is sitting on. I don't think I'm gonna put it over here because it kind of looks, well, maybe. Maybe I'll just connect a little bit of it right there. It's kind of more in shadow over there, but it's all right. We're gonna drop some little highlights in here, not perfectly everywhere. Again, like we said, I'm gonna drop a few in. And over here we can indicate where the edge of the napkin is right there. So that helps us to separate it. See, we fixed it where I accidentally put the background color in wrong. It's okay. All right. Well, it's six o'clock, so I'm just gonna kind of look and see what are my last minute things I really wanna get in there. I really wanna get some straight white in, so I'm gonna clean my brush off really well, and I'm gonna come in with straight white and put those brightest highlights in on the canister. See how that stands out against the other, whoop, against the other tones? We, we save the very brightest for last. We don't wanna put it everywhere because then it'll lose its impact. But see this, now it looks like white flower because it's got some shadows built up. So the shadows don't need to be very dark because like we talked about earlier, when we squinted that circle, it pretty much just all looks white. I feel like our pie still needs a few kind of warmer highlights. Um, if I wasn't in the middle of a demo, I would probably like go across the room and look at my piece, but I can't do that right now. So I'm gonna say what it needs are some brighter golden highlights. So I'm going to make that um, using white. I'm gonna find a spot where you can see what I'm mixing. Um, yeah. White, fancy yellow, opaque, and some pyrrole red light. So it's gonna be kind of like this tangerine orange color, and I think that's gonna really pop nicely. Against the blues and the purples that we put down. And then we will call this demo done. All right, so let's see where we wanna put this. And I don't have any glaze in there now because I really want, um, I want these colors to stand out. I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush so I can get in there a little bit better. But I can see it's gonna, it's gonna stand out. It's gonna be nice. Just need that little, little brush to get more specific. Okay. Yep, that's what we needed. And I'm not putting it everywhere. I'm just putting it in a few places that are gonna make this look like a crusty, delicious pie. Kind of separate the different levels of the uh, weave work here, lattice work. And it's just gonna cover up a little bit more of that blue. I don't think we wanna leave too much of that showing.
before I forget, I wanna make sure everybody knows that I'm having a big Black Friday sale. Um, so all of my online classes are gonna be marked down big time. So they're gonna be marked 20 to 40% off on my website. Um, and if you don't know, my online classes are different from paint along. So they are like very detailed where you get um, like still images of every single brush stroke and every single step. And I really, I really hold your hand the whole way through. So they're really um, easy to follow and, and lots of fun. So they're all gonna be marked um, down starting Friday. So it's gonna be Friday through Monday. So if you haven't taken an online class yet, um, I highly recommend trying out the Lively Still Life. It's like a really nice beginner course. Um, and I'm actually gonna be retiring it after, um, after this weekend. You won't be able to enroll anymore. So it'll be your last chance, but it's gonna be 40% off. So it's gonna be a, a really great opportunity there. So plan on checking that one out. All right. Just need a little bit of warm color on the rolling pin here. Just a few places, I think. And, okay, one more thing. I wanna add some more white. I feel like we need some really bright white highlights. I'm just gonna go with like almost straight white added to my golden color there that I had. Just adding a whole bunch of white to it. I'm gonna drop that in in just a few places and then we're gonna be done. Okay. So where do I see that it's the very brightest on the lattice? I see right there, right there. One, two, right there. And yours don't have to go in the exact same places, guys. I'm just kind of making sure that I change it up a little bit so that uh, this looks natural and we just get some variety in there. All right, we're gonna call it done. Um, yeah. You know what, I didn't put any color right here. I wanna do that really quick, sorry. One more thing. So I put like a, I put a cool dark color in, so now I wanna layer in with a warm color. So I'm gonna go in with alizarin crimson and Maybe just a lizard, well, a tiny speck of Hansi Yellow Opaque, mostly a lizard and crimson. And I'm gonna just drop a few little brush strokes in to cover up some of that cool tone. Just need to warm up that, yeah. We just needed to warm up that shadow a little bit. Okay, now it's done. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Um, I hope that everyone has a fantastic Thanksgiving. Um, have fun baking all your lovely pies. Um, and also, I just wanna tell you all how thankful I am for each of you. Um, you guys are amazing, and I love that you hang out with me every week. You do these demos with me. I cannot wait to tell you what I am planning for 2022. Um, these, my painting demos are gonna, there's gonna be some, some more stuff going on. So I'm excited to share that with you. It's gonna be a little more interactive, lots more teaching. Um, I have a lot of ideas that I'm gonna be sharing with you soon. So everyone have a great Thanksgiving. Take care. All right, bye-bye.